Hello, 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 and welcome to Rainbows Rising, where we ascend together. Thank you so much for your support and for joining me today. This month, I would really like to focus on totems. We've all had those days where we've run into a, a strange animal on the street, something that isn't necessarily a, uh, a localized animal. I, I used to live down in Santa Clarita, California, and driving to work one day, I happened across two egrets on the side of the road. These birds, I don't believe, are native to the area. There's not a lot of water in the desert. They're water birds, and they were walking along the side of the freeway. Now, in the beginning of my journey, I had begun to explore animal totems, and I had asked the universe to send me more diverse animal totems than crows, and red-tailed hawks, which are native to the area. And this particular day, I got two egrets. I remember driving and, and contemplating the, the meaning behind these little water birds. Now, egrets are a totem about being able to stand on your own two feet, be independent, find stillness, tranquility. It is a totem of reflection, of being able to live between the physical and spiritual plane and still find that balance. Now at this time, I happen to be at the beginning of my journey and um, this is kind of back when I was opening my first business and it, it was a spa and I shared the the ownership responsibilities with some family members of mine and we had a tendency of not seeing eye to eye on the creative we just didn't see eye to eye <laughs> um, and we fought a lot both at home and unfortunately at our in our workplace. Not the healthiest business relationship, unfortunately. But during this time, after seeing the egret and contemplating on the stillness and being able to be reflective on my own behaviors and being able to tread softly into these, like, you know, uh, murky waters where you don't know if it's shallow or deep and how that might relate to my situation. Just how deep do I want to go in this business situation? And am I, I'm, I'm creating this spa environment and yet I myself am not at peace. And how can I create that for my clients? And I was able to reflect on on the meaning of these birds, and the meaning to me, and how how this related to my own situation and how I could incorporate the lesson of the egrets into my work. And trust me, it made a profound shift in my day because I began to recognize just how much I needed that peace and that stillness that the egret was encouraging me to to recognize and through my own practice of this i noticed that other people were also practicing this stillness even the person in my business that i was not seeing eye to eye with and this provided space for shifting of changing um, so this, this animal spirit did not just affect me, but it affected my work environment just through my own, uh, interpretation of the, the lessons that this animal brought me. And this week, I really want to 
emphasize the importance of investigating the animal that has come to you on your own. Find out what they eat. Find out when they sleep. Find out the types of behaviors they have. Maybe watch like an Animal Planet episode or, you know, watch watch something on this animal. Like watch how it moves. Watch how it interacts with the other animals. Where is it in the food chain? What is it known for? If your favorite animal of all time is the mole, why? Why do you have this favorite animal? What is it about this animal that draws you to it? What is it about this animal that speaks to you? We all have favorite animals. Every single one of us has a favorite animal. They emphasize that in elementary school. What's your favorite animal? And it may change from time to time. I remember my favorite animal in like first and second grade was like my black cat, which was my pet. I was like, yeah, I love my black cat. Shadow's my favorite animal. (laughs) By about fourth grade, it had shifted to a jungle cat of South America because I had done a rainforest, uh, rainforest essay. And this essay really, really inspired me to understand these these cats that not only were able to travel on land, but in trees and in water. What a magical, magical animal it was. Um, and, and I loved horses for a time, and I felt drawn to dolphins at a time. But why? Why? Ask yourself what your favorite animal is. Ask yourself, what animal have you been seeing recently? What about this animal catches your eye? Tonight, when I was out with my family, I saw an owl. I was captivated by it. I, I, I hooted at it. It moved. I was, I was quite, quite excited by this, this owl's Uh, movement at my hooting and it flew off silently I could not hear a single wing beat that was magnificent to me it was silent silent in its approach to capture its prey hmm hmm I wonder what its message for me happened to be so What I want you to do is to explore just one animal this week. Keep your eyes open for an animal that maybe you don't see all the time. Oh my goodness gracious, is that a peacock in the neighborhood? I was not expecting that. Just minutes ago, I was outside getting the mail. And I heard a flock of geese. A flock of geese. Now, I don't hear that all the time. What is their message? Really think about, think about the, think about what that animal means to you. Right? Think about what that animal is doing when it interacts with you. Those geese, I could not see the geese, but I could hear them. And there was a lot of them. A lot of them. They were all honking, making a, a, you know, ruckus (laughs) beyond the horizon in the dead of night. And here I am reaching out to all of you in the dead of night, being confident in myself. Woo-wee. Maybe that's its message. So... So really, yes, you can look online, you can buy a totem deck, and you can read the meaning in the book, but I'm here to teach you how to connect with your medicine, how to reach deep within your soul, within your heart, and to remember that you have the answers within you, and that nature speaks to you. You look online on somebody else's interpretation of 
you know, the animal you met today. And you're going to see their interpretation, their experience with that animal through their eyes. And it might not resonate with you as deeply as speaking to the animal itself. You can meditate on the animal. Listen to its sounds. Close your eyes. Find a YouTube track with that animal's sounds and just listen and breathe into the silence between its calls. Just really be with it. Maybe you want to uh, download a picture of the animal and put it as your screensaver on your phone, as your wallpaper. And every time you look at that animal, just really stare deeply into its eyes. Ask it questions throughout the day and see if you get an answer. Sometimes I like to print up a picture of the animal and place it above my workstation or place it next to my bed. Before going to sleep or before working on a project, I take a glance at it. Ask for the power. Share your power with me. Oh, mighty, mighty geese. Share your power with me. Right? It sounds silly. Hey. Hey. I mean, I, I literally did a Halloween pagan ritual just a couple days ago, right? Silly, maybe. But I know that when I have reached out to the animal kingdom for answers, for support, and for guidance, they have never let me down. And like I said... We all have had a favorite animal at some point or another. And we all have stumbled across a strange animal that does not belong there, that almost seems to connect with us and make us realize that it's there to speak to us. Right? Every single culture, every single... Uh, tribe or or aboriginal peoples they all have used animals for storytelling for teaching fables for teaching lessons for imbuing power for recognizing inner power utilize the world around you and connect to that ancient wisdom Connect with the sacred wisdom of the land. Be open to it. Be open. Ask for a special animal to find you tomorrow. And I and trust me, an animal will. It could be in a picture. It could be an actual animal coming up to you. It could even be you know a, a commercial or a cartoon. Maybe your daughter gives you a toy randomly at the grocery store and it's that animal. Ask for confirmation from the universe. Send me my totem animal three times, right? Use a stuffed animal. Connect with that. I'm just giving a whole list of all the different types of ways you can connect with your totem animals. Now you may be wondering, how do I choose a totem animal? Well, sometimes the, you don't choose them. Sometimes they choose you. Like I said, they might just stumble across your path and remind you of a, of a healing that is needed. Remind you of a piece of yourself that maybe you haven't been in touch with for quite some time. Maybe it's some support you need. Oh my goodness, have you not had your boundaries for a while? Well, here's an armadillo. Protect yourself right? So listen, listen to their messages. Open your heart. Open your heart to that. Well, some other ways you can connect with an animal totem is choosing your animal totem saying, you know what? I could really use some courage today and when we think of the word courage what animal comes up for you 
I want you to visualize that animal. When you think of courage, what animal do you think of? Well, I'd say probably 99% of you thought of the lion. The lion. If you didn't think of the lion, what animal did you have? I'd like to know. Uh, I think of a lion when I think of courage. It is one of the most stereotypical images of courage. Now, I could dress like a lion. I could do my makeup like a lion. I could paint a lion. I could study lions. I could choose to watch the Lion King. These are all ways that I could personally connect with that lion energy. Maybe I'll roar like a lion. Maybe I'll walk around my house pretending I am a lion, right? Now, all of those things actually draw the power of that animal into you. You want to connect to the spirit of that animal. You, you have to become that animal. You have to call in that animal spirit. You say, I'm calling on you. Share your power with me. What do you do about an animal that maybe isn't as like, you know, <laughs> you can't really, you know, dress like an egret. You know what I mean? You can wear white. You can wear white. You can do an interesting eye makeup thing if you're a woman or a man that likes wearing makeup. Up to you. Hey, no judgment. Um, but you could wear some gold, incorporating gold and white. Drawing a picture. Maybe sitting by the lake. Stick, stick your feet in the lake. Connect that way. Now you might be wondering why it's important to connect with these animal spirits. Like, oh yes, well they all mean something super trivial. Not necessarily true. For example, coyote. Like, what, what do you think of when you think of a coyote? You know, we can, we, we usually see kind of like, like, you know, skinny dog-like creatures. In in a lot of uh, different cultures, they're seen as tricksters or deceivers. I know where I used to live, I would come across coyote a lot crossing the road. They travel in packs. They're skittish. They're territorial. And at the same time, I feel that they also are great teachers in teaching you when you are deceiving yourself. They remind me when I have a deception that I'm making for myself that I, I kind of have to reevaluate. Oh goodness gracious, I am stumbling across a coyote with this friend of mine. And this person has a habit of not being the most honest person in the world with other people. Hmm, maybe they aren't being that honest with me. Maybe I should evaluate that. That is how Coyote speaks to me. What about cat? What if you have a cat at home or a dog? Cats are independent. They're magical. They can see things that... Most people can't see. They see beyond the veil. Dogs, they're loyal. They're trustworthy. They, they are great companions. They teach you how to love unconditionally. Do you have a canary? Canaries speak the song of the heart. They are joyful. Their song is joyful despite being caged. They are always singing the song of joy and freedom of life, even when they are caged. They are birds of the sun. Sunny disposition, happiness. Oh, you, you don't like those? You like lizards? Okay, well, lizards, they kind of sleep all day under the sun. 
perfect time for dreams. Lizards are all about dreaming, daydreaming, dreaming of the possibilities, dreaming of different realities and different worlds and you know, being able to kind of slip in between these different states of constant, ever-changing, parallel dimensional realities. So, there is legitimately lessons for each animal. If you want to know what I see for your animal, if you really can't connect with the animal, you're having trouble trusting your intuition... I would love for all of you to just give it a try. Pull out a piece of paper, pick your favorite animal, write down all the qualities you can think of that associate with that animal. I want you to draw that animal out, see if anything comes out while you're drawing it. You know, play around, see what you get. And if you still need help, look it up online. See how close you were. Don't always go with the first result. Please, please, please double, triple check with different sources, okay? Please, please, please. Okay, well, to wrap up today, I wanted to go ahead and actually give a totem reading for the rest of this week. I'm going to pull one card from my three different totem animal decks. And I will be interpreting the meanings for these cards. So I've gone ahead and drawn three cards. The first card is from the Animal Spirits Knowledge Cards, paintings by Susan Seddon Boulet. I hope I said that right. The first card is Rabbit. Hmm. Now, I want to point out that Rabbit is a quite fearful creature. Rabbits have always been prey for everyone else. They somehow still go about life uh, absent-mindedly, without feeling fear, despite them being kind of at the bottom of the, the circle of life, right? Um, so I, I feel like Rabbit is encouraging you guys to connect with that that feeling of living and not so much fear. Don't fear what's going to happen next. Live in this moment. Go have fun. Focus on your family since bunnies are all about families. Big ones that constantly continue to grow. <laughs> uh, it's I, I think that Rabbit really is about connecting with, with a sense of excitement for life and forgetting all about that fear that, that is really, um, really prominent right now. Everywhere. We're all so fearful. Get back to living. Let go of that fear. Reconnect with your ability to live. Hop freely through the fields of, of the forest without worrying about where the wolf is or the hawk or the owl. Rely on your instincts to let you know when it's time to hide and when it's time to come out of your hole. The second card is from The Wild Unknown Animal Spirit by Kim Kranz. The card I drew from that deck is Sea Serpent. Now, this deck is a little different. It is broken down much like a tarot deck into a type of suits. They have the five elements. They have water, fire, air, earth, and spirit. And Sea Serpent falls under spirit. There's only seven cards to the spirit suit. And Sea Serpent represents the third eye. And looking at this card, it, it reminds me of 
the fact that time isn't linear. We are constantly living in a kind of drifting memories and ideas of the future and this present moment and watching TV programs of different realities and different possibilities and reading books of different realities or possibilities or other people's lives. This world is not linear like we are told, like we are shown uh, in television programs or whatnot or what we're shown in school. I mean, technically it is. But in our mind's eye, we're looking at our future. We're remembering our past. We're reevaluating our choices and trying to imagine what it would have been if we had chose those other options. We're looking into other people's lives. We're watching TV shows of other people's lives in different realities where what if this had happened instead? We can tap into all of these possibilities. Endless, endless, endless possibilities. This sea serpent in this picture is eating its tail. It is the traditional sign of the Ouroboros. I'm sure I'm saying that incorrectly, but... Um, and it also reminds me of the Bermuda Triangle, this space where people just disappear randomly, like Amelia Earhart, she just disappeared, flying around the world, disappeared, where'd she go? Nobody knows. There's a whole bunch of boats that just disappeared out of nowhere. Did they slip into a different reality? Did they... What happened? Nobody knows. Did they cross some veil? The sea serpent is about seeing beyond that. Seeing into the place you wish to be. It's about recognizing that we are in this cycle. We kind of have a theme going on. We have Rabbit with the, being a piece of this cycle of life. Being what nurtures everything else, right? Then you have the sea serpent, which is kind of at the top of the food chain. It is is the one kind of uh, deciding who gets to live <laughs> in the ocean, at least, right? And the very last card, we have the medicine cards. The discovery of power through the ways of animals by Jamie Sands and David Carson. I like this deck a lot. If you're somebody who wants something that's super duper easy to carry, get the first deck. If you're someone who wants to know what you can do to balance your energy, you want to know how to really balance everything out so you are back where you're supposed to be, get the second deck. If you're someone who really likes to do the deep work, dig in deep, get the third deck. It's like three pages of information per animal with the medicine cards. And the card that I pulled is number 43, Spider. Now it just so happens I currently live somewhere where... These little orb weaver spiders are quite common, and right now we're seeing a whole bunch of them. They're huge. These things are massive. They're beautiful. Don't get me wrong. Beautiful spiders. Very big. Their webs are really intricate. And I don't really ever see a spider hanging out at the edge of a web. I always see them at the center. The center of a circle. Right. If I could show you guys these pictures, we've got a bunny in the center of a circle. We have an eye in the center of a sea serpent circle. And we have a spider in the center of a dream catcher. Spiders are all about weaving your dreams into reality. They are about... Uh, Recognizing that you are the creator. That you are in control. And sometimes being in control is about 
patiently waiting for your moment to strike. It's about patiently waiting and enjoying your creation. Take a moment and really have gratitude. Really admire your work. You deserve it. You deserve a moment to admire your work. I'm going to take a moment and admire this podcast when I'm done. Not because I'm arrogant, but because I worked hard. I deserve to feel proud of the work I do, and so do you. Please, please, when you are done manifesting, when you're done evaluating what it is you need to do with your life, and you start to create that, and you start to weave that web, right? When you complete your web, take a moment and really appreciate it. When was the last time you really stopped Stopped trying to move forward for a moment and looked at the life you've already built and said, goodness gracious me, I did a darn good job. High five, high five, right? Hope that wasn't too loud. I'll find out later. Well, yeah. Weave your dreams into reality. Take that time. Really appreciate what you've made. Just kind of uh, to bring all of those, those animals together. We have rabbit, sea serpent, spider. We have um, let go of your fear. We have see beyond, see beyond the veil, see beyond what you think is possible, uh, shift your state of mind, change, change what you think is possible, right? And then when weaving your dreams into reality, take a moment and admire your work because when you do that, you are much more likely to land that opportunity. That fly is going to come straight to you. Stop working so hard. That fly will come. Step back. Step back. Chill in the center of your creation. That fly will come. It'll land. Right where you want it to. Alright? If you guys want a personalized reading, you know where to find me. Description below, right? Um, and I did want to take a moment here at the very end and thank you all so much for supporting me I just started this in uh on September 1st and uh I'm just I'm just so humbled by how many people have been affected by this podcast so far I have over 250 downloads uh at this point and I'm just so grateful for those of you who have reviewed me who have reached out to me um, it's, it's such a humbling experience to know that the information that I have is helping and benefiting people. So please, if, if you're a listener, I encourage you to reach out. Please let me know what you think of the show. If there's anything you'd like to suggest, write a review, subscribe if you desire to, right? Let people know about me. Share the wealth. Share the wealth right? Thank you so, so, so much for joining me today. And I, I'm so grateful. So grateful. Good luck on your animal hunt this week. Please let me know what you find. I am so excited to hear what kind of animals you guys are coming across. All right. Have a good week.
Are you ready to ascend to the next level? This is Rainbow Raja, your spirit guide calling. Please be sure to keep all arms and legs inside your vessel at all times. I'm just here to remind you to take some time today. Support Rainbow's Rising podcast. Go join the Discord community. Check out the Patreon. Get some stickers, custom tarot cards. Check out the merch. The merch. You know you want to. Go connect with Rainbow Raja. Maybe even get a session. Who knows? Your support helps make this show possible. And she loves to support you. Help support her too. Once again, this is Rainbow Raja, your spirit guide, guiding you to your ascension.